What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Eye Test. I'm here with Bobby and Paul. We are going to simplify your process as a fantasy football manager today. Last episode, we did starters that you need on your Dynasty startup team. You can go back to our page, watch that, give it a like, and subscribe to our channel. You can also go ahead and uh, follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where we post shorter clips. Maybe you'll get to see some shorter clips of the starters we picked. But now we move on to bench players that you need on your Dynasty startup team. So we are getting ready to rock and roll. Paul, you're going to be starting off hot. We're at the turn on the 12th round. So we have all picked um, essentially our full starting rosters and like two bench spots. We got nine more to fill, I believe, eight, eight or nine more to fill. This is when you're really starting to get into the slim pickings, the dart throws. We're going to let you know who we're high on, and that's pretty much it. We're going to let you know who passes the eye test, who is highly touted as maybe a rookie dynasty pick, and much, much more. If you're ready to go, go ahead and comment who you're targeting in the later rounds of your dynasty startup, and let's do this. Let's get it. All right, here we go. All right, so Brandon Cooks went off the board. Good, you can have him. I'm going oh. after Tank Bigsby here. And a huge reason for this for me personally is because on my team, I have Travis Etienne. So if I can get his handcuff, who is apparently pushing for touches already in OTAs or whatever, I love him as my bench stash here. And I am going back and forth between, oh, did – did Chig just get picked? Okay, cool. Chig got picked. Um, then I'm going to go with Tyler Algier, Bijan's uh, backup. I mean, he was a thousand yard rusher. He's young and he's going in the 12th round. So if Bijan gets injured or if for some reason he's a bust, we know Tyler Algier can at least fit in with that offense. Yeah, great bet stash there. Also was a thousand yard rusher last year. Not a bad handcuff. Yeah, that's. I said that. Yeah, he killed it. Oh, didn't hear you. Oops. That's okay. All right, so this is an easy pick for me. I'm going Marvin Mims here. He is has a very clear path after this season to being at the least the wide receiver two in Denver because I believe Cortland Sutton is a free agent after this season. So you're talking about an outside duo of Mims and Judy. The opportunity is going to be there eventually and on an improving offense in Denver, we think. So Marvin Mims, really good value here who could – you know, potentially make a few round jump in next year's dynasty startups. Coming back to you, Bobby. Coming back to me. Okay. Ooh, so there's no one. <laughs> no, I'm actually, so I'm, this is another pretty easy one for me as well. I'm going Desmond Ritter here. And, you know, like you said, John, in the intro, we're taking dart throws here. We have mm -hmm. no idea what Desmond Ritter is going to be for a full season. We know he'll probably be better than Marcus Mariota was in the Falcons offense, but that's not saying much, but again, just taking a dart throw here. And when you have an offense with Bijan, Kyle Pitts and Drake London, you know, I think it's a pretty good pick here and hoping maybe that he could eventually get his way into the super flex conversation. Yeah. All right, I like that. On. Actually, that's a pretty good one. Ooh, All Michael right. Thomas. Again, I, I think we're going to find a lot of running back dark throws in these later rounds. I'm eyeing up Eli Mitchell because every time that he is healthy, uh, he <laughs> has pretty good games. Now, he's competing with CMC, so it kind of turns me off a little bit. There's our guy, Bob. Give me Samaje P. Ryan. Oh, nice. A I dart like throw for at least one year. So he might, he might be a guy that gains attractiveness this year first year of my dynasty startup and I'm able to dish him out for something, yeah. you know, while at, he's at his highest value. He's a, he's a definitely a massive sleeper in redraft. I'd say he's a pretty good bet to produce this year. Yeah. I, I do like P Ryan a lot. I hate him in Cincinnati cause he was always a Raven killer, but <laughs> we move on. So again, sticking with the whole dart throws here, I am actually surprised that John did not take Hendon hooker. I know. You yeah. Yeah. So much higher on him than I was this offseason. Yeah. And now I get to draft the potential QB one of a potent Detroit Lions offense. God, do you ever think we would say that out loud? 
So, no. Hendon Hooker, welcome to the squad. You're definitely going to be riding my bench this year unless something happens with Goff. But who knows? I, that could that could be a QB1 in the future. It could be. All right. So, then we keep this train going. And, again, I'm going to stick with another home run hit here that I'm trying to make. I don't expect too much from this young man. I'm not even sure what his injury was last year. And they drafted a wide receiver. Wand- I'm going to go Wandale Robinson here. I don't know. Who did the Giants draft? Oh, they drafted Jalen Hyatt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which I don't sure know when he got picked. Um, I wonder if he did get picked. He d- he definitely. Oh, maybe not. I- Dude, there are still some absolute sleeper wide receivers here. Yeah, oh there are. Oh, my God. The wide Dude. receiver position is very... In Dynasty, like, you could get, like, it's crazy. You, you can get, get some win-now wide receivers. Like, I'm loving Adam Thielen. Like, he's going to be the wide receiver one on the Panthers this year. I understand he doesn't have much left in him, but he he stays relatively healthy each year. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked OBJ, but I'm not going to do that. Um, why? Well. Because <laughs> he's on the Ravens. He gets so that's injured why. pretty quick. <laughs> so, I mean, how far down? I think I could probably get. <laughs> Adam Thielen a little bit later. Yeah, all right. So my dart throw right now, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and get Luke Musgrave. Jordan loves security blanket? Question mark. We don't know. It's a dart throw. Perhaps. Oh, Ooh. Tank Dell. Ooh, I do like the Devin Singletary pick right before me. I actually think he might have a larger role than a lot of people expect this season. So look out for that. Unfortunately, I don't get the chance to pick him. But a guy that I am going to pick, who actually I think you could project is going to have a pretty big role this season if he stays healthy, because he has already a strong rapport with his quarterback, and they're both on new teams, and that's Alan Lazard. I feel like that connection will just keep rolling with the Jets, and he could you know, find his way to you know, maybe close to 10 touchdowns. Oh, it's back to me. I always The wraparound comes quick. Sleeper okay. Monster quick, they're AI. And so, they, apparently, they hate quarterbacks for the bench. <laughs> so I just want to point this out before um, I make my pick because I'm not picking this guy. This, this guy, Kayshawn Booty. Apparently, he there's a chance he's not going to make the Patriots ro- opening day roster. Yeah, that's wild. The, so just wanted to throw that out there for this guy was very high on draft boards people were talking to him as the wide receiver one of the 23 class and to him maybe not making the team that's just just crazy yeah he was like a top 10 pick in rookie mocks when they first came out yeah but i digress and i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with the wide receiver that Deshaun Watson probably showed the most rapport with last season, and that's Donovan Peoples-Jones. I know it's more crowded now, but I'm going to see if that momentum could keep rolling into this season. All right. Uh, I'm going to... Well, I only have... I'm going to get Romeo Dobbs here. I mean, we're in the 15th round, and what's Romeo Dobbs? Like 21, 23? You know, he's had one year. He, He... he didn't have anything special last year, but he did show some glimpses. Um, and I just, I'm excited on to see what Jordan Love can do. Eh, not the guys, biggest fan of it, but I need w- w- wide receivers. Guys, I, like I only Jordan Love this year. I only have two running backs in the <laughs> 16th round, <laughs> oh, no. and they're both rookies. Oh no. So subconsciously, I'm subconsciously I'm going oh, zero running oh. back. Oh yeah, you are going zero running back. <laughs> That's okay. You have Jalen Hurts. Katie is trying to join our podcast right now. She's jumping up on me. <clears throat> All right, so my turn. None of these veteran quarterbacks tickle me in any <laughs> sort of way. So I'm going to completely ignore them, and I think I am going to take. A rookie tight end? No, I'm not. I'm actually. I'm going to take Irv Smith because he has shown glimpses that he can produce at this level, and he's now on Cincinnati high-powered offense as my backup tight end. I'll take it, and I can even do like a little matchup play with him and uh, Cole Komet there. Oh, Paul, 
Yeah, so now it's back to me again. God, Look at all these I quarterbacks like... that the sleeper bots are not touching. Is that a <laughs> sign? Is that a sign that we shouldn't it's either? One hundred percent a sign. I think it's just the. Oh, maybe actually. I think I was this is say... the round you gotta get one. I was gonna say yeah. maybe it's the algorithm with the rosters being filled out, but that doesn't make sense because it's dynasty. Yeah. Right. So none of them tickle me. I think in a real life draft, I'd take Adam Thielen, but I, I'll let John have his guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down here. And I am going to get a deep threat in DJ Chark. Why not? I don't oh, know. okay. Sean Tucker. Wow. Finding himself in the 16th round. All right. So, uh, this guy, Rashid Shahid, last year, he had some glimpses at the end of the season, I think. No, he did not. Oh, that's projection. <laughs> oh, no, that's projection. Yeah, no, he did. Look at that. Okay, uh, week 13, 11. Week 15, 18. That's playoffs. Then then, then he lost you. Then he lost. If you were starting him, uh, then he lost you in the playoffs. Um, he is with Derek Carr. Chris Olave, that's pretty much it, right? Oh, Michael Thomas. So he's a wide receiver three, or I can get wide receiver one on Carolina and Adam Thielen, and that's what I'm going to do, which honestly I'm pretty happy with because I'm pretty short on wide receivers. <laughs> well, you're short on wide receivers, and I'm extremely short on running backs. So I got to take one here, and the pickings are really bad. But I'm going to go with the guy that I think has the most path. I mean, he was he was a borderline RB2 last year. Did have some decent weeks. A little bit worried maybe that he won't be on the team that he's on now if they sign Dalvin Cook. But be that as it may, going with Raheem Mostert here, easily the guy that has the biggest path to some type of volume. Gainwell wouldn't have been bad either. And now, uh, no, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> now I'm going to go back to the running back position because I still only have three. And this guy is behind an injury prone running back in Arizona. That's James Conner. Keontae Ingram, if James Conner goes down, has the easiest path to being the RB1 on his team. So Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt. I don't trust them, and they're not on a team right now, so I'm going to leave them there. I'm going to go Keontae Ingram, massive dart throw. Come on. Come on, give me Lenny. Give me Lenny, baby. All right, come on. It's the 17th round, Leonard Fournette. He's not on a team right now, <laughs> but that's okay. He's going to be on a team, guys. Don't worry. 17th round, I'm getting a potential win now running back in the 17th round. Who's There's, I mean, look, any rookie that you pick in the 17th round that's a dart throw, they're not going to be on your team in a year anyway. So why not get someone who can produce who in can, year one on your team who, and get Leonard Fournette? He's washed, and he's his hammy is, like, made of glass. Leonard Fournette last year, he was a running back 12, which means that he made RB1 status. No way, dude. Yes, in PPR. Come on now. Let me see. All that. right. You want to talk about a massive, massive dart throw. What I'm about to do is crazy, but I don't care. I'm going to see if Kyle Shanahan can rejuvenate Sam Darnold's career. Leonard Fournette ever. Go for <laughs> I'm going to go for it. <laughs> what? Sorry. Sorry. What? <laughs> what? Say it. Bob. Sorry. I'm just saying. <laughs> Leonard Fournette. He's not getting checked down Brady again because he's retired. Leonard Fournette averaged three and a half yards of carry. He had 73 receptions. <laughs> and, and he still didn't even do that much with that. That's all reception points. So all right, let's Leonard think about the teams that he could. He could be like he could go to the Vikings and be in committee with Madison. He could do the same with the Cowboys with Pollard. Uh, he could go to the Broncos, and he could potentially be a lead back. No, stop. Well, he would. P They're not going to get any other P running Ryan's, backs. P Ryan's better than stop. Is. Stop. No, yes, he's he not. Is. Yes, dude. he no, is. He is not. Yes, he is. Dude, if he you absolutely can just... is. <laughs> stop. If you're telling me, if you ask 
at he's anyone. Not- they would rather have P. Ryan than Leonard Fournette. No one's taking Leonard Fournette over P. Ryan. For year think- one... I'm taking Fournette over yeah. Ryan for this year. year one, like this it's year, not like P Ryan's going to oh, turn into some magical first. running back. Like they're both going to suck or not be on a team. In you're three talking years. about a guy that's not doesn't even have a team. He's going to be on one. Is he? Is yes, he? he's exploring free agency. Oh, 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 the guy that averaged three and a half yards a carry. <laughs> <laughs> and and Samanje P Ryan last year averaged four yards a carry on 95 attempts and had four receiving touchdowns in very, very limited opportunity. So just miss me with that shit. <laughs> All right, Paul went with Zay Jones. Paul, any any words on Zay Jones? Just a, a nice deep threat. He had some flashes last year, a couple 25-point games. Why not? Yeah, he got, like, a handful of games with 10-plus targets. So, anytime you got Trevor Lawrence throwing you in the ball, I'll take it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get K.J. Osborne here. I mean, he showed some flashes last year. Nothing crazy. Um, he is competing with Jordan Addison for the wide receiver two role. Um, and quite honestly... Although I do think I would lean Addison. Actually, I would totally lean Addison. Um, but if KJ, if uh, Addison were to get hurt or if he were to be a bust or if Jefferson were to get hurt, uh, KJ Osborne can fit in to the wide receiver two role in Minnesota. <laughs> what? Bob I'm still sorry. can't get over it. Why is it so outlandish to think that Leonard Fournette, you know why? Because year old first you know why? Because played well. You know why? Because P. Ryan had, let's see, 95 rushes and 51 targets, and he had the same amount of touchdowns that Leonard Fournette did when Leonard Fournette had 189 rushes and 83 targets. Okay, but P. Ryan was on the Bengals, who were scoring way more points than the Broncos. And Leonard Fournette was with check down Brady. He had so much opportunity. He did nothing with it. He can go to a quarterback that does check downs. (laughs) That's not like the hardest skill. It's not. Yeah, but not a lot of quarterbacks check the ball down like Brady does. Lenny can still play. Like I, oh, I, I Lenny can still he can. Play. Paul, you have a thing with Tampa Bay running backs, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I would be very honest. I like Rashad White. I think at the end, Rashad White just showed he was better than Lenny. But Lenny was also dealing with like hamstring injuries all year. Like Lenny played. Oh, shocking! For- Leonard Fournette has a hamstring injury. P. Ryan was just on a Joe Burrow offense. We wouldn't. Yeah, he was on the Bengals, like and now he's get, and now he's in a Sean Payton offense. Was that his fault that he's on a good team? No, I just think that the Broncos are going to be scoring less touchdowns than the Bengals, then, so less the, opportunities for than P. the Ryan. team that than the team that Leonard Fournette's on. And it is dynasty, so like P. Ryan's going to be shot after next year, just like Leonard Fournette probably will. P. Ryan doesn't have as many <laughs> miles on the tires as <laughs> Leonard Fournette does. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Leonard Fournette's he's huffing <laughs> and puffing. But he's going to be huffing and puffing with four catches a week. <laughs> There's a reason P. Ryan's ADP is that much higher. Than right, you got 10 seconds to make your dart throw. Oh, uh, oh, I'm going to go a dart throw running back that doesn't have a team that's like Leonard Fournette. And who's better than Leonard Fournette? Kareem Hunt. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to throw. <laughs> I'm going to th- rip my fedora off. <laughs> You guys are just prisoners of the moment with check down Brady. That's not happening again. Bro, Leonard Fournette went in like the first round last year. Yeah, with Brady as his quarterback. Okay, so it doesn't mean Brady was And now he's not signed. And now he's not signed. He's going to be signed. Oh, please give me this one guy. He probably wants too much. P. Ryan was like, oh, please, Sean. He's going to let, he's letting Cook and them set the market. He's letting Cook and Zeke set the market before he just, like, picks a team. Oh, yeah. Leonard Fournette totally gets to dictate the free agent market because of his tremendous track record. It's a pretty good track record. I am so over talking about Leonard Fournette. (laughs) No, dude, I got him in the 17th round, and I'm getting (laughs) shit for it. (laughs) No, because you – no, the reason you're getting shit for it is because you said you'd rather have him than P. Ryan. That's why you're getting shit for it. And that's just ridiculous. If for if like definitely up for debate, I wouldn't say it's ridiculous. Give me the give me give me the ultimate dart throw in dynasty football right now. 
and that is Justin Ross of the Kansas City Chiefs. The guy, Pat Mahomes, has been talking up all offseason. It's not Kadarius Toney. It's not Sky Moore. Justin Ross is going to be your breakout wide receiver on the Chiefs. I don't really believe that, but I'm going to make the pick anyway. It's a good pick for the 19th round. I'll take it. Why not get a deep threat on the Chiefs? And this is awesome. Everyone's talking about Puka Nakua on the Rams. You know, yeah. it's going to be, um, what's the word? Like Cooper Cup's apprentice, per se. Um, and who knows? I mean, hey, if you're going to learn how to be good at wide receiver, why not be on a team that one of the best in the game right now is playing on. I'll take him. Haven't done much research on the guy. Had no interest in drafting him in our rookie draft. Um, but right now, uh, there's not that many options on the table. I'm kind of surprised Hunter Renfro still hasn't been drafted. Uh, but let's just go ahead with Puka. Because, again, dart throw City in the 19th round. These guys aren't going to be on my team in a year anyway. And he has some opportunity with the Rams, too. There's not much competition. Outside right. Of Cooper he Cup. could be a wide receiver, too, on the Rams. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to continue with this dart throw mentality here and take possibly Josh Jacobs successor. And that's going to be Zamir White. Jacobs is playing on the franchise tag this year. He might demand big money elsewhere. Zamir White could slide right into that workhorse role. All right. And back to me. Who last pick Paul. Last, Last pick. pick. Gonna make it a good one. Gonna make it a good one. Oh, God. Easy peasy. Give me Gus the bus Edwards, bro. <laughs> Dobbins isn't even gonna play this year because he's holding out for whatever reason. And I get, <laughs> I get touched oh, yeah, on I did King see, himself. I did see that. Yeah, Dobbins is being such a huge... Can't say it, but he's being such a... John could just bleep it out. He's being <laughs> such a pussy. <laughs> all right so i, I kind of want to get a dart throw tight end here um hayden hurst will be with rookie bryce young uh hayden hurst has flashes of like a 15 point game maybe three times a year you can also get zach Ertz, um who the cardinals are going to be playing with a backup tight end but you're probably not going to get much longevity out of zach Ertz. but again i could care less it's the 20th round in a mock draft and then of course you got jake ferguson who now that uh, Schultz is gone on the Cowboys. Jake Ferguson is going to be competing for a tight end one role against uh, Luke Schoonmaker, I believe, who's a rookie. And I mean, Hayden Hurst is the clear tight end one on the Panthers. Zach Ertz, I'm going to go with Hayden Hurts here. How old is Zach Ertz now? He's got to be pushing. It. He's like 32 ish. 30. All right. Last pick for me. Filled out my running back position. Got so many wide receivers. Only have one tight end. But you know what? Honestly, I'll pick up someone on the wire when the time comes. I'm going to go with oof, the quarterback position. And a guy that maybe has a path to starting this year if the incumbent is mediocre again. And I'm talking about Mac Jones. And I'm going to take his backup, Bailey Zappi. Who played well. Who played well. He had yeah. some flashes when he was. All right. So that does it for our bench players you need on your Dynasty uh, startup team. Let's go ahead and look at the board here for all of our YouTube viewers. We appreciate you viewing in. Hey, if you're listening to us on Apple and Spotify, that's you. Hey, head on over to our YouTube page and watch this. You're going to want to see this. We got tons of bench players that you're going to need on your dynasty startup team you can also head back to our previous episode of the starters you need in your dynasty startup league bob go ahead tell us what you think your best bench player is currently and we can go ahead and back up to the ninth round because i believe we started eight so there's not really anyone that's like sexy that jumps off the page when you're at this point in a dynasty startup. But I think I did get a really good value with Desmond Ritter. Again, we don't know how good he's going to be or anything like that. But if you're getting a guy that's guaranteed the starting spot, at least this season in the 13th round, 
with a bunch of playmakers around him, I think that's a really good value. And there is a path for him to be the long-term starter if he performs. And Paul, I feel like you made a pretty solid push in the wide receiver room with uh, your bench players that you need. How about you go ahead and share your strategy on that if you had one and why it was wide receivers? Yeah, so really in the when we're looking at bench stashes, especially for Dynasty, I'm looking for the highest upside and hopefully youth if if available. So with Wandale Robinson sitting there in the 14th round, um, I just couldn't not take him. I mean, the Giants receiver room is, I think, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, and Wandale Robinson. So, like, not really many household names, even though I do like Sterling Shepard when he's actually on the field. So, Wandale Robinson at 22 years old, maybe he could get a rapport with Daniel Jones going. Or they did sign uh, Paris Campbell. Woo! Yeah, and Isaiah Hodgins had um, a, probably the most amount of flashes out of all the Giants wide receivers last year. And Jalen Hyatt. Don't forget, they have a low-key crowded wide receiver room now. Yeah, dude. It's just so mediocre. Like, and yeah. below average. Below yeah, average. It, it's crowded, but it's crowded with, like, a bunch of, like, bench stashes. Salad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally like, bench stashes. Yeah. I think, so. you know, one of the picks that I really loved about my team was that f- that first pick of this episode was with Tyler Algier. I mean... A thousand yard rusher. He's on his second year. Um, and he's Bijan's backup. And you know what? He may still find a way to get worked into that offense, even yeah. the RB2. So, you know, obviously we're expecting because of draft capital, Bijan's just going to be the absolute bell cow. But we don't know what that's going to do to his body. I mean, we knew, we remember all the. The, the rumors that we were hearing leading up to the Jets last year, I mean, everyone was freaking out about Brees Hall. And then all of a sudden you start hearing that, like, Michael Carter is going to be the starter and Brees Hall is the backup. And then you start to hear the opposite. Brees Hall is the bell cow. And then you kind of, like, watch Brees Hall slowly get worked in, like, the first two, three weeks of the season. He has his blow up. Everyone knows he's the man. And then he gets injured. So Tyler Algier, I really like that out of my uh, my bench stashes. And it's an amazing bench stash for all of you guys that are about to have a dynasty startup coming up. And we hope that we helped you out, and we hope that we simplified your process as a fantasy football manager. If you feel like we did, go ahead and like this video. If you feel like we didn't, then comment, hey, we need more out of you, and then say what that is. Say because we we're suck. growing and we're trying to get better. So we appreciate everyone viewing these videos. Um, Go ahead and share this with your friends as you get closer to fantasy season. We are so close. We're going to be coming out with more content coming out this week. Check out our TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for those short clips. We'll see you next week with what are we thinking, boys? Maybe like uh, we got some fun ideas like the all-decade team and all that stuff. Maybe we'll work that in in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah. Look for our shorts, maybe. We'll oh, the, oh, uh, roast next... each other, roasting each other's dynasty teams. We could stay in the dynasty. Wow. We could stay in the dynasty realm, and we could have fun with each other's dynasty teams. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good for a nice old, old fashioned ribbing of each other's uh, teams. It could yeah, be I mean, and especially going off the conversation we had about Leonard Fournette tonight. I mean, yeah. we can totally get some beef going. I think oh, so. Bob's going to have a script for your team, John. He's going to like. Yeah, I know. And Bob's team is going to be so hard to rip. <laughs> That's why Bob wants to do it so bad. <laughs> yeah, right. So I'll be like, <laughs> I don't remember. No, Paul's, I don't remember team, who Paul's team's really good. I'll give Paul credit. Thank you, Bob. <sighs> so is my team, dude. I had such yeah, a good John, first round of rookie terrible, draft. Dude. dude, my team's going to probably be like top four. No way. <laughs> Dude, I got Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud and Jalen Hurts. That doesn't mean anything. And Jalen Hurts. Like, come you, on. My quarterback need, room is disgusting. You would need Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud to, like, be a QB1 in their first year to be in the top four. And your running backs aren't even that All good. All right, fine. Then I'll be competing in year two. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, guys. Look for those videos coming out. Check out our shorts on YouTube and everything else in between. 